Q&A box and we'll do our best to answer as many of those as we can as we go along. Yeah, are we up and running? It says it's going, I just wanna make sure I can see it. Yeah. It'll, I'm waiting for it to come up and... I've already been sent in, but if anyone's got... All right, we are, we are live everywhere. So yeah! Yay! It's technology! Yay! <laughs> Hello, everybody! Oh, big warm welcome to our Shark Talk. This is so exciting here live on Zoom and on YouTube. Um, in case you don't know who we are, we're going to introduce ourselves. But if you're fanatical about sharks, maybe you're a little bit fearful of sharks, like I definitely used to be. Maybe you're fascinated by sharks and you love watching documentaries about them, or maybe to swim with them one day maybe you want to be a marine biologist maybe this is all part of your school home learning and you're just trying to find out a bit more about these amazing creatures as part of world oceans week whatever re your reason is for joining us today we are so glad you've chosen to log on to zoom log on to youtube to be with us here this afternoon because we're going to talk to the amazing Gillian morris brake and duncan brake all about their new shark superpowers book so I'm Naomi Wilkinson, for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm a children's presenter here in the UK. Uh, I've presented lots of programmes for over 20 years, um, but I've done quite a lot of wildlife programmes with the Natural History Unit in Bristol, uh, and for my own series, Naomi's Nightmares of Nature, which you may have seen, uh, the team have very much enjoyed throwing me literally in the deep end with sharks around the world. So that's my reason for being here today. Gillian and Duncan, tell us about you two. So yeah, we were lucky enough um, to meet Naomi on one of those situations where we threw her in with sharks as well, yep. and it was incredible. So um, I'm a marine biologist, the founder of Sharks for Kids, and here to just share my passion for sharks, why these animals are amazing, and also to talk about, we're really excited about our new book. Uh, it launched on June 4th, and we'll get there. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but really just to share some information as well with you guys and answer your questions about sharks and talk about why we love them so much. Yeah, again, my background is in marine biology. Uh, I started as a marine biologist and then um, started capturing uh, these amazing critters as well as some other cool animals with cameras. Um, so actually uh, kind of my path divulged a little bit and now I spend a lot of time actually filming for different shows like the one that Naomi was in, uh, which was a lot of fun. I kind of wish we were all right back there. It was great. Right <laughs> we had encounters with hammerhead sharks and with lemon sharks when I was with you, which was amazing. So where are you for people that don't know? Yeah, so we normally live in the Bahamas, a beautiful island called Bimini that Naomi was able to visit us on and, and meet some of our, our locals, uh, our local shark species. Uh, but because of the world kind of changing with everything, we're actually in Florida right now. So pretty close. Uh, for those of you guys who aren't familiar, the Bahamas is a chain of, of islands. Uh, it's a different nation than the, um, the US, but it's very close to it's sort of in our backyard here in Florida. and. Uh, probably the most amazing place to see sharks in the world. And you have the most stunning turquoise clear water there ever that I've ever seen. It's beautiful. So basically what Gillian and Duncan don't know about sharks is not worth knowing. So if you've got a question, <laughs> if you've got answered, there's a Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom or uh, so that you can click on. Uh, pop your question into us and we'll try and ask as many of those as we can along the way. We'll also be talking a bit about their brilliant new book uh, and doing a bit of myth busting as well about sharks. So I've got a load of questions. So I'm going to start just so we get a little idea of your encounters that you've had, some of your most memorable moments. I want to do a quick fire question round uh, and you can give me some quick answers on your best and worst experiences. Ready? So first up, both of you, your best experience your best shark experience? Um, I think like it's it, it seems a little corny and cheesy because uh, we really have probably one of the best places in the world in our backyard to dive with great hammerhead sharks but every time I jump in the water with the great hammerhead uh, it, they, they always you know they show a different behavior a little different quirk um, it's pretty magical every single time to be in the water with an animal that big and and even, and, and you think a lot of people fear hammerheads and they'll think that they're one of the big man-eating sharks, um, but realizing how, how, how easy they can move around and, and how like even a big hammerhead and it comes right up towards the camera, even if it just touches the camera, 
or even touches the side of your hand and you're trying to redirect, it will turn around on a dime and swim away. There's no aggression coming from it. All they're coming for is that bait. So I would say, the top, top yeah, top. hammerheads are my favorite species, but I'd say the best moment was we actually got to see a lemon shark give birth. Uh, it was actually played on BBC Shark. So mm -hmm. if you guys saw that program, if you haven't, please watch it. It's amazing. The footage um, is incredible. Very beautiful, real facts and you know the reality of these animals um and so we got to see a lemon shark give birth to 10 pups wow absolutely amazing so i'd have to say that's probably the cool by far the coolest thing yeah. i've a shark encounter i've had amazing what's your what's been your worst is there a worst shark experience um, i think like i think all shark experiences for me are pretty positive and pretty amazing uh, just because I love the animals so much, but probably one of the, the, the worst experiences shark related that I had was um, uh, we were doing a project uh, down with Ocean X where we were going down in Haiti uh, to jump in the reefs. And we were expecting to jump into these beautiful reefs and, uh, and see tons of sharks and tons of wildlife. And we jumped in there and there's some of the prettiest reefs that I've seen in the entire Caribbean. So these beautiful, beautiful corals and finger structures, and you're just thinking this place is gonna be full of wildlife, but all the trophic levels were missing. Any fish bigger than this were missing. So like, um, so there was no barracuda, there were no snapper, there were no grouper, and there were no sharks as well. And the problem being is that unfortunately, they've been fished out as well as um, a, lot of, a lot of pollution and marine and plastic debris may have been leading to the lack of animals in those areas. So I think for me, that kind of scared me after being in beautiful areas like the shark sanctuary in the Bahamas and seeing so many animals, and then going to an area where you're like, wow, this is beautiful. And then where, where, where are the sharks? Yeah. yeah, okay. I think for me is we were free diving on another island in the Bahamas and we found a nurse shark that had a bullet hole in its head and it was still alive, but it wasn't doing well. It wasn't, it was, you know, it was hardly breathing. And I just think, you know, to see an animal suffer like that, such a beautiful animal and I'm, I love nurse sharks. I think they're amazing. This little, let me see behind me here. For those of you that don't know, they got that cool little uh, whiskers. You. <laughs> you have a nurse shark. Uh, so to see that and to feel pretty helpless and to not understand why that had happened, I'd say that, you know, those moments and that one in particular is, is really, really hard to, to witness. And, and uh, yeah, just that would, I'd say the, the worst. Very understandable worst one. What about your most magical encounter? Oh, that's going to have to be right back at the shark birth. Um, like what, what the Jillian was saying, that was her best encounter. That yeah. was just, just, just seeing a shark just slop, slop out like a big slimy how, little... How soft. big are they when they come out? Oh, oh they, they're kind of maybe... Oh wow! Like, yeah, like they they come out as a proper shark, but everything's floppy. So the pectoral fins are floppy, the dorsal fins floppy. They look like a kind of big slimy sausage with fins. <laughs> Talking about slimy, that is one of the kind of grossest and slimiest shoots I've ever been on. Because when you're in the water filming this, um, all the shark afterbirth is is flopping around in the in the water, and it's little sticky webby mats of goop. And so messy. as soon as you come out of the water, your wetsuit is just covered <laughs> in like goo and stickiness. And it took, it took weeks to get rid of it. All that, all that other stuff. But still it. worth it. But magical, magical, very magical. <laughs> so. Honestly. <laughs> Aside from that, you know, we spent a lot of time free diving. So for those of you guys, that means we don't have the equipment. We're just diving down on one breath and hanging out on the bottom. So you take a big breath and you dive down and sitting on the bottom of the ocean and having the hammerheads or we have this beautiful tiger shark that showed up on the hammerhead site now and just sitting on the bottom and having a really quiet moment with them and the rest of the world has disappeared and you're just there with these big beautiful animals in their world and it's it's a short time because it's your breath hold and you're just there and I think those moments where we're completely connected to the ocean are really, really magical. So that for me is, is just something that I, I love so much and getting to do. Great. Okay. Can I ask you the scariest encounter you've ever had? Ooh. What am I thinking? Sometimes uh, find it a bit scary. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually, 
Um, it's funny, we've like both Jillian and I have been in the water with like big tiger sharks, bull sharks, great whites. Um, and the, the time that I was possibly the most scared was uh, in the water at night um, because we were filming silky sharks, right? Now, and silky sharks don't worry me too much. They're little sharks, they're pelagic sharks, they're swimming around, all the rest of it at night. Um, and we were surrounded by them and we're over thousands of feet of water in the dark with these sharks swimming around. Yeah, <laughs> I could see your face. Not yeah. sure, really. But it wasn't, those, yeah, it wasn't those sharks that worried me because before it got dark, what we'd seen was lots of these silky sharks had all these, these big holes out of them. And then also we'd seen some mahi-mahi, which are dolphin fish, and they had these big holes all off them as well, which means that there's lots of cookie cutter sharks liking to eat in the area. Now in the superpowers book, you can learn about, yeah, you can learn about cookie cutter sharks and they look like the thing of nightmares, the big long brown looking shark and they've got big green eyes and they've got these just like teeth like they're out of the horror movie and they're, they're, they're tiny, they're absolutely tiny, but they swim up and they take a cookie cut, cut a chunk out of their prey. So they kind of bite first and ask questions later with these little tiny, tiny sharks that prey on dolphins, on whales, anything that's bigger than them. Uh, so I, I think I just, it just got in my head. What's okay. that? Did you see one? No, I didn't. I didn't. That's the thing. That was the whole thing. But um, in the dark, and, and the lights are, and like you, your camera's just shining lights out and they're attracted to the light. So you're dark <laughs> in the ocean, you've got these big old lights sticking out. So uh, it was just in my head the whole time as well. And, and, and like occasionally you'd be backing up and you'd, your, your safety diver would, would touch your leg or something and it'd be instantly, it's like, Ooh, what was that? <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I think uh, yeah. No, not, not the biggest or scariest fish in the sea, but like, I think it was just a case of me getting in my own head a little bit on that. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. Jay, scary. Uh, yeah, I think mine's similar to Duncan talking about the trip to Haiti. I was in Indonesia, um, I don't know, 12 years ago now, and we were diving and it's some of the most spectacular reefs that I'd ever seen. And we were in these areas and we didn't see any sharks. Mm. And there were still a lot of fish and it's still fairly healthy, but um, you know, they'd been wiped out in that area from various fishing techniques. And I, it was the first time that I had really seen the ocean in a space, um, you know, other than like swimming at the beach or something, but diving in a place where for two, three weeks, we didn't see a shark. And that to me was just really eye-opening to when people talk about, you know, they're disappearing in places and things like that, but to actually see it up close, it just, it really sunk in uh, the, the threats that they're facing and what's happening. So that to me was, was really, really scary because just how the reality of it. Yeah, literally not seeing them. Do you have a funniest shark encounter? Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, like uh, a, a lot of times, uh, um, yeah, we've had some pretty bizarre encounters with sharks, but for a funny behavior that um, I was lucky enough to see involved actually a dolphin um, and a nurse shark. And uh, um, this was quite a few years ago, but the bottlenose were actually crater feeding, which is when they find where they think that there's like a little fish, like a razor fish or something that they like in the sand, and it's shot down and it picks out the, uh, the razor fish. Now, they'd obviously been feeding in that area, so they'd attracted uh, a couple of nurse sharks into the area. Now, one bottle of nose had obviously got its fill and was quite intrigued about these nurse sharks and what they were up to. And that's also another shark that you can find in the superpowers book. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what happened, which is actually part of the superpower. So the dolphin actually dropped one of these razor fish in front of the nurse shark. Um, and then as the nurse shark smelt it and came a little bit closer, the dolphin would pick it up and then like kind of tease it a little bit, which I thought was pretty, it was a bit mean, but a bit funny. But then all of a sudden the dolphin left it in front of the nurse shark. And then from a, a distance of about this, this distance away from the front of the mouth, the, uh, the nurse shark did a quick suck and that fish just disappeared like instantly. <laughs> Um, and you just seeing the, seeing the dolphin's reaction, like the dolphin was just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Where, where'd it go? What happened? And so the dolphin then was like, oh, okay, I need to see this again. So it went and got another fish and then dropped it around in front of the shark. And that's because no sharks 
have this amazing ability to suck. They can suck a conch, which is a big snail, out of its shell. It's like the force of 10 kind of Dyson vacuum cleaners, that sucking power. So just the fact that you, you can barely even see the thing moving when they suck, suck the fish in. So it was honestly, it was probably more the dolphin's reaction to the situation that kind of yeah. uh, was the funny part for me. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think nurse sharks in general are just really comical. The way they sort of move around, they stack up on top of each other. Um, they'll actually perch up the hammerhead dive is a is a baited dive, so there's a bait box and this feeder and works with them. And the nurse sharks just kind of line up, and they arch their fins up, and they look like they're sitting like dogs, sort of waiting uh, for a snack. And just their facial features, and they just have a huge personality. And it's just they seem like they're, you know, sometimes their faces look like they're laughing at somebody told a joke. And so I think just in general nurse sharks are hilarious mm -hmm. and they're they're so funny to watch and, yeah. and see their behaviors wicked okay i'm going to ask you a question that we've had sent in one from charlotte and her younger sister stephanie hello to you uh they would like to know do sharks have Thank belly you. buttons <laughs> Can I do that? yeah sure actually if you guys were listening uh earlier about the uh shark birth that we were talking about with the lemon sharks um the lemon sharks actually when they pop out of their mothers they're actually in, still attached by their umbilical cord uh, to their mother so they have to fight off that umbilical cord and once it breaks away they get left with that tiny little belly button so yeah uh, it does seal up over the next kind of year or two but um it's it's a tiny little belly button right on the underneath of the shark but there are a few different ways that sharks kind of um have their young jill can tell you a little bit about that so um, yeah, just quickly. So some do lay egg cases as well. Uh, some have egg cases inside, in the case of the nurse shark, they have egg cases inside and the female um, will have those, then the babies will hatch out and then they're born alive. And then we have, these are kind of the three main ways. And, uh, and then you have um, the connection to the mother with an umbilical cord where they break off like we saw with the lemon shark. So uh, just because they're sharks, they, they're actually pretty diverse. And you'll see in the book as well as their adaptations or things that they can do, their superpowers that help them survive are very, very different across the different species. So talking about cases, actually, Elijah sent oh, wow. a photo of something he found wow. on the beach last very, week. Very, said, very cool. Is that a shark egg? And said, if it is, um, how can you identify which shark it has come from? So it can either be a shark or a skate also, which is sort of a flat shark. Uh, think of their cousin that's kind of smushed. And um, depending on where you are, uh, you can definitely check that out. The Shark Trust, which yeah. is a UK organization, they have their great egg case hunt and they have a whole resource page where you can look up and figure out where it came from and then you can report it. So Elijah, definitely do that because they want to know what species are in the area. So you okay. can actually be a shark scientist by looking it up and submitting your photo. Where you found it and find out what shark it came from. That's so cool. I love yeah. that. Right. I, talking about your encounters, Duncan, when you're filming sharks. So you have to entice sharks in to be oh, yeah. in the area. How do you go about doing that? Um, it's, it's, it's interesting. One of the reasons I like to kind of film sharks is you kind of go to the spot where you know they are and then you put bait in the water. Now, people would be shocked because on TV you see those shots of the sharks jawing at the camera or coming in and all the rest of it. What people don't see is that sometimes, like the production team, we're, we are, we're laying out there in the sun, baking or in the cold, freezing. And or being sick over the side, I've had. Yeah, or being sick over the side of the boat, which is also chumming the water and helping bring the sharks in. <laughs> um, hopefully. But uh, yeah, the, uh, so, so you have, have a lot of bait in the water. But again, the sharks don't necessarily come straight in. And sometimes they might even smell it, but they'll be really, really a little bit timid to come all the way in. Um, and that's the thing. In the media, we do see a lot of these images where the sharks are right at the camera and the you know, they're biting at where the bait is and stuff like that. But that sometimes has taken hours and hours to get those animals close. Yeah, so yeah, we, we use very stinky stuff in the water, yeah. And how do you go about protecting the teams that you work with and yourselves? Um, I think it's, a lot, a lot of it is experience um, with the animals. We get asked about how do you do this? How do you do that? Um, how do you become, you know, an underwater camera person, a marine biologist? 
uh, I think the biggest thing is just building your experience. Um, and that means right from your basic water skills. So you have to be comfortable in the water, scuba diving, free diving, uh, before you should be jumping in with a lot of these animals and a lot of these sharks. Uh, and the other thing too is the sharks will kind of give you a hint. They, they don't chat. They don't talk to you uh, and say, oi, get out the way or all the rest of it. But they give us these little visual cues, things like posturing. It's like some sharks, they'll, they'll basically put their pec fins down and kind of make themselves look a little bit beefy. They might even have a little bit of a back arch. Um, and that gives you an idea that, you know, I'm feeling a bit territorial. I'm not happy with you, what you're doing in the water. So we know then to back off. Some of them will even jaw a little bit where they're kind of like, you know, showing you their teeth. Oh, and look, you don't want this. Um, and a lot of visual cues, but a big thing is also uh, relying on an amazing safety team as well in the water. So, um, and they don't get a, a, enough credit on these, these jobs as well, as we have usually people who are, behind my back as well, watching my yeah. six as well. And it's not because we think the sharks are gonna attack us, it's because a lot of time I'm doing this and I'm in this whole little world of the video camera. So I'm not really paying attention too much about what's going on behind me. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of times we have amazing people who also can read the sharks in the water with us. Brilliant, I'm gonna look at a quick question that's come in. What is the biggest shark? Is that Ilya? Mm -hmm. Ilya who's stubborn, thank you for that one. Yeah, great question. So the biggest is actually the whale shark, and uh, they can be anywhere from about probably about 15 meters, 12 to 15 meters, uh, 45 feet ish. Um, and they're the largest fish in the sea. Um, they're covered in spots, really incredible animal with a massive mouth, and they filter feed. So they actually suck in plankton. So these are the smallest little organisms, uh, but they're the biggest fish in the sea, which I think is pretty incredible. Great question. Um, Gillian, one for you. What problems are sharks facing around the world today? So it's, there are issues that are global and then there's also local issues, regional. And so uh, for most of you watching, if you're interested in sharks, you've probably heard of shark finning. So the act of actually removing the fins from the shark, usually they're alive when this happens. So pretty cool. It's used to make a soup. Um, but that's not the only threat. Their meat is consumed. Um, they're caught for game, as game fish, sport fishing, so just for fun. Um, they're killed in different places because people are afraid of them. And they're also caught as bycatch. So what that means is if people are trying to catch tuna or swordfish, but they're catching all of these sharks on a big long line, and when they're pulling the line in, the sharks are probably dead already. So they're not being used for anything because the fishermen don't want them. So it's called bycatch. Um, so really it it's, depends on where you are. You can also find shark in makeup, lotion, lipstick, dog treats. So there's quite a few threats that are actually affecting these animals. And that's not even getting into plastic pollution and climate change, which is also making an impact on all marine life, including sharks. Which actually leads me to another question that we've had that's come in from B on Twitter. And she asks, can sharks taste when they eat rubbish? Does it taste bad? So, yeah, that's a great question. Um, because sharks, if you read in the book too, the tiger sharks are definitely um, the trash cans, the rubbish bins of the sea. They've been known to have found lots of different random non-food items in their stomach. So sharks can taste. They do have taste receptors. It's not their strongest sense because it's not really used to find food. It's used really to just taste. And, and if they take a taste bite, is this food? Um, and so it's definitely not, but they have them lining in their mouth and their throat. So they can taste things. And yes, they would be able to interpret that that isn't food. Um, there's kind of this idea that sharks eat everything. Absolutely not. They have favorite foods just like we do. And shark bites are really unfortunate, and, but they're very rare. And usually what happens is a shark takes a bite. We don't taste like food and they let go, but the damage has been done because our skin's pretty squishy. They have sharp teeth. It's not a great combination. Um, extremely good to be able to test. Yeah, it. exactly. Or, or, you know, just like us, we don't eat everything around it. And we, just like we would say, oh, I'm not going to eat this marker. It's, it's, they do have the ability to taste. Okay. Great question. 
So regarding all the problems that they're facing, is there stuff that we can do? Because some of those fishing problems and things seem a bit bigger than we are maybe. Is there small things that we can do at home to make a difference? Yeah, I think for those of you joining today, learning about sharks. That's the first step is really learning the facts about an animal or anything. If you're, if you're trying to new, learn a new skill or um, learn how to do a dance, or maybe some of you guys have tried out a new recipe uh, while we've all been stuck at home, education first, learn. So take the time to learn about sharks. Uh, there's a lot of great resources. Um, our Sharks for Kids website. I mentioned the Shark Trust. If you're looking at the egg cases, a lot of amazing resources out there to, to learn. And, and then find out what's happening locally. Um, are there places that sell shark fin soup, shark meat? Those are good to avoid. Or you know, maybe talk to them if, if you feel comfortable and asking them, you know, are you aware that this might be an endangered species you're serving? Um, and just being aware, I think, of, of what we eat, where it comes from, is a, is a really big thing. Um, you products know, as well. Products, yeah. yeah. Like, check, check products. Anything from your cat food uh, that may say contains white fish. Uh, a couple of the universities over here have done studies where they've actually found endangered shark species contained within certain brands of cat food. Um, okay. Other things, even the soup mix that's general so it shows white fish, anything that actually shows squalene in it too, because squalene is used in a lot of cosmetics, mm -hmm. um, including lipsticks, um, also different things like acne treatments and things like that. So, and that's actually, squalene is kind of shark liver oil. Uh, so it gets How the- How do you spell that? How do you spell squalene? It's S-Q-U-A-L-E-N-E, -E, I yeah. think. Um, there is a plant. Yeah, there's a plant derivative, so you have to be careful. They've, yeah. they've made, there is a, a plant version of it that is, and you will see. Um, so the best thing as well is just to ask. Catch of the day, white fish, you guys, fish and chips. You know, if, if you eat seafood, you know, make sure it's sustainable. Make sure you know what the species is you're eating yeah. because there's a lot of things mislabeled and even the place you're buying it from, they may have been told something different as well. So mm -hmm. it's just really about... Um, educating and not being afraid to ask questions and being aware that shark is in a lot of things. It's not just served as here's a shark fillet. It's it's much bigger than that. Because we do love our fish and chips here in the yeah. UK. Yeah. Big fish and chip eaters. So one to bear in mind. Have either of you ever been bitten? <laughs> I have. I've never been bitten, and I mean, as Duncan mentioned, thousands oh, no. of hours oh, no, you can see uh, with white sharks, you tiger sharks. My gross feet either. <laughs> <laughs> right, like, I apologize to everyone. I, know, you can see, I just. This is because the only time I have ever had an interaction <laughs> with 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 a shark that had its mouth around a part of my body was uh, I had a nurse shark suck my toes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and it was, we were talking about that amazing sucking power before, and uh, yeah, I had a nurse shark suck on my toes, uh, and that was completely wow. my fault, and the person who was baiting's fault as well, because we were trying to get a shot of the nurse shark swimming around us, and the person was throwing lots of bait around me, and the nurse shark came, and the piece of bait went next to my toes, and the nurse shark went, and sucked my toes in, and then immediately spat them out, which doesn't really say much about the taste of my feet, but yeah. Um, I was not was the it. person throwing yeah, the no, was I was the person, not, It was yeah. not my fault. Yeah. We all all right, I'm glad to hear it. Can we um, do a bit of quick myth busting? Sure. Yes. Some absolutely. of these things that we've heard about sharks, are they true or are they not? Uh, is it true that sharks can smell blood from a mile away? Um, from a mile away? I think maybe not so much a mile away, but what everybody gets obsessed with this blood thought, um, yeah. but Actually, the shark's hearing is much better than its sense of smell uh, for a lot of species. So they can actually hear us way before they've got better hearing than kind of cats and dogs. So especially the pelagic ocean wanderers like oceanic white tips and stuff can hear us from miles and miles and miles away before they even smell us, which is great. That's I, the okay. best example I've seen is think of a normal sized swimming pool. And if you put like a drop of blood in that, we actually had a webinar with Dr. Steve Pajura on our, our Sharks for Kids webinar series that he talked about senses and he did a demonstration putting it in the pool to kind of help kids see exactly. It's, it's much closer than you think. It's certainly not miles away, but we hear these things, right? And, yeah. and we hear a lot of information about sharks 
It is not correct. So all of you watching today, when you learn, if you read the book, you guys are learning facts, share those with other people. Use that, that voice to share these interesting things that you're learning so that we have facts out there instead of myths like that. Fear. What about this one? Are all sharks hungry man eaters? Will they attack people that are swimming? No, in no, no, they won't. We've, we've talked a lot about uh, mistaken identity with sharks as well. And the fact that they don't have hands to go, ooh, what is this? So they just go and they give it a test bite as well. But also a lot of people are very concerned. We've come back to that blood question about the fact that, ooh, sharks might be a attracted to the smell of human blood if I cut myself in the water. And there has been a lot of research done that indicates that sharks aren't attracted to the smell of human blood. I was involved in a production where all the production crew, we went and gave blood, um, and then we went to a site, and we put our human blood in the water with the sharks, and we put a bunch of fish blood in the water with the sharks. And the human blood, the sharks just came by, weren't interested, and then as soon as the fish blood was in the water. They went crazy and started biting at the device and like trying to hit where we had the fish blood stored and stuff like that. So I, I think it's safe to say a lot of shark species really don't really don't see us as an item on the menu. And they do see you in the water, don't they? I, I've always been amazed when I'm in the water with sharks. They clock you. They don't. They know you're there, yeah. but then they just cruise on by and not interested. <laughs> um, do all sharks have thousands of sharp teeth? They certainly have lots of teeth and they can be very sharp. Uh, they don't all have that sort of triangular shape that we think of. Uh, it really, if we look at their teeth, you can think about like having built in silverware and it really can help us determine what they eat. So you've talked about the cookie cutter shark teeth. You guys see the image in the book. It's they're shaped very differently. The nurse shark sort of, let me go behind me has tiny little teeth and hard plates because they crush things like conch, which are a big snail and lobster. Uh, so very different diets, so very different shape. But over the course of their life, yes, they will have thousands because they lose them all the time. They don't keep that nice adult set and take care of them like we do. They uh, lose their teeth constantly. So as long as they're alive, their body is producing new teeth. Amazing. Are all sharks massive? <laughs> no, um, the whale shark, uh, largest species of fish in the world, but dwarf lantern shark I could hold in my hand and the newly discovered pocket shark, which is amazing, I think has beaten the dwarf, yes, pocket shark, <laughs> but it's, Keep it in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, but that's not why, believe it or not, it's, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's beat out the dwarf lantern by about a half an inch in the size, it's smaller. It's called a pocket shark because it's got little pockets beh behind its pectoral fins that can actually squirt out a glowing liquid. <laughs> Just amazing. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm going to be Googling it after this. Amazing. Um, is it true that sharks do not get cancer? Yeah, yeah it's, it's tricky. It's like uh, this kind of brings us back to uh, the use of sharks in cosmetics and uh, as well as in treatments and stuff. And, I think as well because sharks are right on the top of the food chain and there's this big powerful animal that um, historically they've been used a lot for you know medicines and developing medicines and uh, the other thing too is that a shark's immune system has been shown to be very 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 strong um, as well as their ability to heal as well you think sharks they, they, they get a fight with a in, in a fight with their buddy or when sharks mate the male will actually bite onto the female so they get these big, big scratches and scars and stuff, which they heal very, very quickly from. And uh, although there has been a lot of research that show that they have amazing ability to heal and stuff, there hasn't been anything definitive that proves that they don't get cancer. Okay, okay. Well, I think that's in my myth busting. Have we got any more questions? Remember, if you've got a question, put it in the Q&A and we'll... Well, I have one for you because we yeah. did some quick stuff. And before we jump into some of the book stuff and, and more questions is, so you have swam with sharks uh, and you did mention that, you know, you were nervous at first and I definitely, you know, very nervous. But do you have a favorite shark moment that you've had and, and what, where was it? What was it? I mean, I think my favorite moments have been in the Bahamas with you and in Belize with Dr. Rachel Graham because the water is so clear. And I think that takes some of the fear away when you have better visibility, um, when you can't see very well and it's really choppy and murky and then you know there's a shark in the water as well. That's really quite intimidating when you're already a little bit fearful. Um, but um, maybe probably my first encounter with sharks the first time because I was so 
phobic of them. Um, I hadn't been in an aquarium for most of my life because I was too afraid. I couldn't oh, look wow. at television. I couldn't look at a drawing of a shark. It was that bad. I had so many actual nightmares. So it was such a, a fear conquering experience for me that I was yeah. on this massive high after I'd done it. Um, so for about two weeks afterwards, I was just reliving that experience and could not believe that I was surrounded by about 30 big sharks and they all just swam past and didn't, <laughs> didn't bat an eyelid that I was there. And I think that was just such a, like you say, it's all about replacing fear with facts and educating myself and all the sort of damage I'd done and telling myself how afraid I was of them and not understanding them at all and their behavior. It was just such a kind of huge euphoric experience to go, oh, this is cool. These are amazing creatures and start to learn about them and feel like I, yeah, I made a big step in beating that fear. So is there a shark? You've obviously been with hammerheads and lemons and nurse sharks. Is there a type of shark that you would like to swim with now that you've done it before that you haven't? I want to meet that pocket shark now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you got to get in a submarine, I think, for that one. Oh, no, yeah, okay. I know. I know. Um, yeah. well, let's do that then. <laughs> yeah, getting the submarine's a little, little bit scarier, I think. Yeah, uh, that to me seems far scarier than any shark encounter. Yeah. I'm not a little claustrophobic. So, uh, but very cool. I'm going to move on to your book. So tell us, why have you decided to write Shark Superpowers? I think, you know, for me, I really want kids to realize, and yes, there are some of the most iconic, well-known species in the book. Obviously, there's a hammerhead on the front, but one of our main goals through Sharks for Kids is there's over 500 different species of shark and we want students to, to learn about them and to learn about the little guys, the pocket shark, um, the deep sea species, the amazing things that they can do and just to understand how diverse they are, that it isn't simply just white sharks and tiger sharks and hammerheads, all of which are absolutely amazing, but there's so much more than that. So to have an opportunity and, and you clan gave us the opportunity to put that out there. Uh, yeah, I think it was just a, a really exciting, you know, to share some of the things that we think are most interesting about these animals. Yeah, it's not just just the animals themselves, it's some of the behaviors that they do as well. It's like, like, who, who thought a shark might pee? Who thought a shark might fart? Who yeah. thought a shark <laughs> might even puke? For, for a good reason, mm -hmm. apart from, you know, the normal reason, you know, like they're doing it for a reason to help themselves. Uh, so yeah, it's it's fascinating to be able to share a few things like that with people. Because I felt like I knew quite a lot about sharks from various encounters with them. But I was reading your book, I was like, no way, no yeah. way, no way. There's <laughs> amazing facts about them. So I recommend you get it and it's out now. Yes, yeah. it is. So if you guys check, um, there's a couple different options if you're UK based, um, Amazon and Book Depository, also your regular bookshops that you go to. If yeah. you're international, um, Book Depository is doing free international shipping, which is amazing. So um, we also have links on the Sharks for Kids website if that's a little like what, where, yeah. you, you can go right on there. We've got a couple of links and very easy to get. And to give you guys an idea as well, the book, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure, uh, yeah, my last uh, one. I may have to hold it up because it, yeah, it's going to disappear. Oh, where it's going to go? disappear. Where it's gonna go? Disappear but, but if you pop inside, you'll see that uh, as well as these incredible kind of cartoony illustrations by Steve May, um, we've also got some actual real life photographs of the animals out in nature. Uh, we've got some sort of distribution maps that show where they're where they're located there in the world. Oh yeah, there's, there there's the is. cookie cutter terrifying <laughs> teeth. Um, and then also we have some illustrations of the sharks to show their kind of profile, as well as some pretty cool sharky facts. So we've got some sciencey stuff, some funny stuff, some really cool information in there as well. Um, and that's kind of how the book is laid out. Yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough for writing it. I think it's brilliant. And I hope that loads of people will read it and enjoy it. I'm sure they will. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to give a big shout out as well to uh, Steve Batchel as well, who actually we've all worked with, who's uh, been fun to uh, be involved in these projects. And he actually uh, is a big shark supporter and loves sharks. And he uh, wrote a forward which kind of told us how his kind of life journey uh, with sharks began. Brilliant. And, and I think we did say we'd give away a copy of your book to our favourite question today. Yeah. So I think if it's all right with you, I think it should go to B 
for her question about can sharks uh, taste? I I taste plastic, yeah, 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 I like that. Yeah. I, 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 I can imagine that plastic tastes pretty bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah. one of the things that people mentioned um, earlier when we were saying, how can we help these animals as yeah. well as being a responsible uh, yeah, consumer uh, is also help get rid of some of the plastic out of our oceans and our, our environment. And if you're trying to think, what can I do at home, sitting at home, just me by myself, maybe a reusable water bottle. So you're putting less plastic into the environment, which eventually ends up into the ocean, which is going to affect sharks. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have time to do a few of the questions from the chat or? Sure, yeah. I'll let you select a few. Thank you guys. I've seen a bunch come in. Um, we can do a few, uh, yeah, if, if that works for everybody. Um, let's have a look. Uh, <laughs> Francis says, if you were a shark, which one would it be and why? What you answer that? I would be the hammerhead. Uh, great hammerhead in particular, just uh, amazing eyesight, believe it or not, those wide set eyes, lots of sensors on their cephalofoil, that head, and I'm fascinated by them. Uh, that's probably simply just, they're amazing adaptations and I love spending time with them. So I think that would be, yeah, that would be the shark that I'd want to be. Yeah, you quite like spicy food as well. And they, like hammerheads eat rays and they get a lot of spines in their faces as well. So, yeah. yeah, I think uh, I think I'd, I'd probably, I like to be a hammerhead too. Yeah, they're cool shark. But sharks. I do, the, the lifestyle of a nurse shark does appeal to me a little bit too, yeah. as well. Like laying around and sleeping a lot seems pretty, pretty fun. Yeah. yeah, we do like that. Erica says, this is a great question. How do you think the hammerheads will react when you go back to filming in Bimini? They've been so used to you all. Will your absence mean working at getting to know your presence again? I think you know, with, with COVID, the season ended. So for you guys mm -hmm. that aren't familiar with the hammerhead season, it's December-ish through March, April is kind of, they migrate to the island and we get to dive with them. And kind of mid-March, everything stopped. So the diving stopped. So they're pretty used to seeing people every day. Um, it'll be really interesting to see, you know, did they leave? Because there are receivers around the island. Many of them have been tagged with a local research organization. So. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see how quickly they left, if it affected their migratory route. Did they leave earlier? Did they stick around? Um, and so, yeah. And does that mean for next season, December time, will they be there or will they be delayed? Yeah, it, it's, it's very possible, but I think they're so conditioned for so many years. These animals are extremely intelligent uh, that I think we'll see them come back. Uh, without any issue but yeah i'm sure for a while they were probably wondering mm -hmm. what happened where is everybody <laughs> where, did I, where did everyone go <laughs> um what was the first shark you ever met says hannah who's eight hi hannah hi hannah uh, mine was a nurse shark mm -hmm. and i was eight when i met the nurse shark snorkeling in florida yeah i actually saw a uh i think it was probably sand tiger a sand tiger and i saw it at an aquarium actually yeah yeah it was in the uk um, yeah, with a with a big, they kind of look like they've got a mouthful of nails, but they're actually quite quite a chilled out shark. Yeah. Uh, Xander says, do sharks go up to breathe above the sea? No, mm. so they breathe underwater with gills. Uh, those lines that you see on the outside of the shark's head, those the the gill slits. So the gills are inside. Think of it like the shark's lungs. The water goes in their mouth, and they get oxygen from it, passes through the gills, and it comes out those openings on the side. So they never have to go to the surface to get air to breathe. They breathe underwater their whole life. Amazing. Craig says, how fast is a tiger shark? Depends on, I mean, they can go, they're not the fastest. No. Um, the mako shark, well, there's some argument now. We believe it's the mako shark. There may be one um, that rivals that, but there just hasn't been a lot of evidence that's been supported, but um, tiger sharks can probably cruise at, I think it's anywhere from 10 to like 15 miles per hour. It really depends on whether they're cruising or if they're chasing. Definitely not one of the fastest sharks though. No. Okay. Um, Gavin, you didn't miss your question earlier on. Your question is, are sharks really older than trees? Oh. Uh, so sharks have been around for 450 million years. Um, so not the same ones we have today, uh, different, you know, prehistoric species that have, are no longer around, but yes, yeah, some version of sharks been around for 450 million years. Pretty incredible. Elliot says, what kind of sharks do we have in the UK? Uh, 
So you guys have, and we actually have a really cool coloring sheet featuring a bunch of these. We have three coloring sheets, little guys, fast guys, bigger guys. So definitely check that out. Um, you have blue sharks, basking sharks, different species of cat sharks. Um, and so, yeah, there's quite a few different diverse species that you have. And I think the one I'm most excited about that I want to come to the UK and swim with is the basking shark. Yeah, they're very large animals. Well, leaders as well, aren't they? Like the whale sharks. Yeah, so they're, like they're, the whale sharks. they're not a danger to you. You don't need to worry about them. And when I went to swim with blue sharks off the coast of Penzance, we sailed out for a long time. And like you were saying, Duncan, we were sitting around for a long time before they came. So it's it's not something you're likely to just encounter. Don't worry about <laughs> it or anything. Um, what else do we got? How old were you when you first swam with sharks? Asks Pippa. I was eight. I mean, I was snorkeling in Florida when I saw that nurse shark. So, uh, and that was the first wild encounter. And then it just went from there. Mm. Yeah, I think I was a bit older, actually. Um, I don't know whether I'd swam with someone I was younger in the oceans. There's a good chance because, you know, the, a lot of times the sharks know you're there and they just swim on by. They have no interest in you. Uh, they can feel you. They can hear you. Um, but um, I think probably not until my late teens. Yeah. Okay. My late teens. Uh, Jen says, I love the ocean and snorkeling, but I get nervous in deeper water. Did you find this when you first started swimming in the ocean? And how did you get over it? <laughs> I, I grew up on a lake that was pretty deep and we could never see the bottom unless you were right by shore. And growing up in Maine, the water's not super clear. So I didn't ever really swim in a place that I could see a hundred feet down crystal clear. So not for me <laughs> yeah i know I, I i for some reason it's i think this is this is the power of the media and what the media has done all these these shark movies and these horror movies and stuff so even though i spend a lot of my life underwater filming some of these massive sharks and, and, and all the rest of it is i as long as i can like i'm i've got my head underwater and i can see everything i feel perfectly at home perfectly fine but it's something bizarre about uh if i'm out in the open ocean with my head above the water, swimming around with lots of depth under me um, and no way of sticking my head down to see what's down there. There's something in the back of your head that starts to play like a different theme tune in your head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like that yeah. sort of thing. Um, uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that one, yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> that was brilliant. Um, but yeah, I think it's, and, and that's, again, that's what the power of kind of movies and the media has kind of imprinted on our, our heads as well um but yeah so I, I feel like honestly the ability to be in the water see the sharks and see their behavior around me would be a massive thing on me get more comfortable with these animals over the years i don't know if you can answer this one how many times have you swum with sharks Ooh. Ooh. Oh, i don't even know i don't even know yeah. <laughs> we're really lucky we're really we, lucky we yeah. spend a, you know normal situation we're in the water with these animals at least once a week we see them every day uh it's why we live in the bahamas we love it we can be around Sometimes these photos behind us are all from the bahamas and as Nomi, you know got to meet and see and experience uh some of what we do regularly yeah so we're very very lucky we spend some weeks probably more time with sharks than we do other humans so well, i recommend that we all follow you on social media and stuff so that we can see how coronavirus has had an impact because i'm sure you'll be researching it and yeah. let us know about it because we'd all be really interested to hear that and just before we go elijah has checked out the egg case and identified it as a spotted ray oh Very wow cool. that's awesome Good. nice Everyone's work there. ray nice so work hold you all up forever because obviously everyone's got things to do you've got other lessons to do or you know your whole lockdown day planned i'm sure but i know that <laughs> all of us watching are so grateful to you both for writing this amazing book and for doing all the things you do to educate young people about sharks we think you are amazing thank you so much and thank you for making time to chat and answer everybody's questions that's so thank great thank you so much for thank the time you. as well as well Naomi and for also you guys is I think it's really important for students to see you don't have to always not be afraid if you were afraid thank you for sharing that story mm -hmm. and if you guys haven't seen the, the Naomi's episodes please check them out because it's it's uh -huh. really incredible and I have a huge amount of respect for what you're you do and and show all these kids that it's okay to be afraid because you can change that. You can go out and do this and, and learn. Um, and yeah, so I think that's- It doesn't really have to be about sharks either. No, it can be, it can be any of animal or anything. Yeah. 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 
and that we can make a difference by playing our part in doing little things at home that will actually impact the ocean and all the creatures that live there. Absolutely. So thank you so much for watching. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank, thank you, you guys. to everybody joining thank as well. Thank you guys. And uh, hopefully see you from our social media soon. Yeah. Yeah.